Malum and say. Malum and what? Malum and say. What? <laughs> Malum and say. Do I think there's a line Liddy wouldn't cross? No, he would rationalize. <laughs> Liddy's whole thing is Malum on say, the act of evil in and of itself versus Malum prohibitum, the laws of man. What he aspires to is that I can do things in justification and I'm okay with that. We've all had some version of that in our lives and we've all been willing to overlook certain moral quandaries we would have otherwise in the pursuit of our own ambition, in the pursuit of feeling what it would be like to make that much money or have that car, ride in that private plane. We've all felt that love of somebody above us who, who thinks we're good and they respect our opinion. That can be intoxicating. The, the president wants me to sit next to him on the flight to Miami. And Nixon would be nothing if there weren't a coterie of people around making them powerful. Four more years! That's why John Dean is just incredibly relatable. Welcome to the big boy club. This Republican fundraiser, it's quite an eye-opening moment for him in terms of, you know, quite what he's got himself involved in and, and, you know, meeting the man who's funding Operation Gemstone. He's just getting sort of deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole, you know, and it, it is getting stranger and murkier. <laughs> <laughs> he's, you know, he's just trying to ride the, ride the waves of this, I think, like they all are. And I think they all think that they're expert surfers in this political landscape. All right, well, I'll talk to you later, man. Yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye. Martha's really just trying to survive. She's experienced this extremely traumatic event and there is already this element of gaslighting to it. For your nerves, dear. And what do we say if we are asked questions by the press? She has been instructed by her husband to not speak to the press. You called me screaming, and now I am telling you I want to move on. So she's been cut off from her usual support systems, and she's kind of alone in it. So she's really just moving through her life trying to survive under the impression that her husband has done everything he could to protect her. In her mind, he quit the campaign. Dad got fired from his job at the White House. Daddy did not get fired. Daddy left voluntarily to spend more time with his family. And what she learns at the end, of course, is that he was fired from the campaign and that he very much is still under its spell. Martha realizes that she needs to speak out, not just for her, but really to, to protect her family, to protect her husband and her daughter. And, and to her, that's the moment of change.